Hi, we want to do our, our review over our proteins. Okay, the proteins. Proteins are something that you eat. Proteins are broken down in the digestive tract into peptides and amino acids. Amino acids are what's absorbed. In digestion, proteins and peptides, proteins to peptides will occur in the stomach. And then the peptides to amino acids occurs in the small intestines. Okay, the amino acids are then absorbed. They go to the hepatic portal vein and go to the liver where they're going to be used for the body. Your liver is going to be able to make um, plasma proteins from those amino acids. Those amino acids will also go into the bloodstream so that the cells are able to use those amino acids. So the amino acids from the diet and um, the amino acids from the normal breakdown of proteins, amino acids from the normal breakdown of proteins, will actually both enter and they're going to make the um, amino acid pool. The amino acid pool is where your cells are going to be able to get the amino acids to actually make a new protein from. If your amino acids are missing an essential amino acid, they're not going to be able to make that protein. If your cells are missing an essential amino acid, then they're not going to be able to make that protein. So that would be the limiting amino acid. The amino acid that is missing, the amino acid that is missing to make a protein or a peptide by the cell um, is called the limited, the limiting amino acid. Okay. In the stomach, you have a lot of acid. So another word here that goes along with proteins, proteins are going to be denatured by acids or heat. A very common example of denaturing a protein is cooking an egg. Whenever you put the egg white in the pan, get it hot, it turns white, it's because it's denatured and it changed the structure of the protein. Okay, here we have the structure of a protein. You can see that we have a green, blue, red, and a lighter blue line. In this, whenever you eat a protein, this is the structure of it. Whenever it goes into the stomach with a um, low pH of the stomach, you're going to have denaturization so that these bonds are broken apart so you end up with several peptide molecules. Several peptides that used to make up the protein, now they're peptides. Whenever those peptides go to the small intestines, they're going to be digested into individual amino acids. So that's what all of those little A's are right there. An amino acid is then going to be absorbed across the intestinal lining. Okay, over here in our structure, we have a picture of two amino acids. You can see that amino acids have a backbone called the nitrogen carbon carbon backbone. So both of them have nitrogen and carbon and carbon. And um, those are two amino acids. The R group is going to vary depending on each individual amino acid. You have over 100 types of amino acids in nature. You have 20 amino acids that are going to make up structures in your body but none of, the, none of those amino acids are essential, which means that you have to eat those foods or eat those amino acids in your diet in order for your body to um, obtain them. Your body cannot make those nutrients itself. Okay, here's two amino acids here, and I put these words up here, hydrolysis and condensation. Hydrolysis is going to break a molecule apart by water, and condensation is going to join the two molecules together so that you end up with water. So whenever you have these two amino acids put together, Take this OH group and this hydrogen away that gives you water, and this would form a bond between that nitrogen and carbon, and that would actually put these two molecules together. That's a condensation reaction. A hydrolysis reaction would be that this water here breaks, this water would be HOH. It goes into this bond here. It would break this bond here so that you have your OH group and your hydrogen group um, back to the individual amino acids, and that would be a hydrolysis reaction. Okay, we um, also learned a couple of words of deamination. Whenever, this right here is an amino acid. If this has a use in the body, if your body needs to do something with this amino acid, other than build protein structures, um, it's going to have to deaminate. So deamination is removal of the nitrogen group. Whenever you have removal of the nitrogen group, that gives you ammonia. That ammonia goes into the bloodstream and it's going to go to the liver and the liver converts it to urea. Okay, so whenever the urea goes into the bloodstream, it goes to the kidneys and the kidneys are going to filter it out and it goes, it leaves the body in urine. 
So if you have kidney failure, you're probably going to have an increased amount of urine, or, I'm sorry, of urea in the blood. If you have liver failure, you're probably going to have an increased ammonia amounts. Um, we have a definition here of high quality protein versus low quality protein. Okay. Um, high quality proteins are going to have all of your essential amino acids in good quantities so that your body would be able to use it. Low quality proteins are probably going to have all of your amino acids, but they're not going to be enough of certain amino acids. So um, you need to eat more foods with essential amino acids in order to um, allow your body to have the essential amino acids. Um, remember too that if you have a very high protein diet, then that's probably, it could remove calcium from the bones. So that's something um, people need to watch out for if they're on an extremely high um, protein diet. Now let's look at, um, let's look at our summary of our chapters four, five, and six. Okay, proteins were in chapter six. We wanted to look at what percentage of your calories are supposed to be um, coming from proteins. 10 to 35% of the calories in your diet should come from proteins. If you look at the number of calories that is, that means that you should be eating about 200 to 700 calories per day um, from protein foods. Okay, which gives you um, 50 to 175 grams per day of proteins that you should eat. That is if you're on a 2,000 calorie diet. Okay, come down and we look at our essential nutrients. Our essential nutrients, you have non-essential amino acids, which means that your body cannot make those amino acids, so you have to eat them. The purpose in the diet, the purpose in the diet is um, to structurally build things in your body. You can um, see here that it says on our, um, on our picture, I'm going to enlarge it here, um, the structural components um, that are going to be made from proteins would be hemoglobin, hormones. In fact, most of your hormones, I know we have that over there on structural too, but if you remember, we said certain hormones, such as your reproductive hormones, cortisol and aldosterone, most of your hormones are called peptide hormones, and that would include things like insulin, glucagon, ADH, uh, if you remember several of those. Your cell membranes are made up of, you have proteins, protein um, will transport pop molecules in a cell or through the cell membrane. Antibodies are made up of proteins, and collagen is made up of a lot of proteins. So those are some common proteins in your body. Um, the number, I have number three, energy there. Whenever your body needs energy to be made, it's going to first use carbohydrates for energy. Its second um, source of energy usually is going to be fats. And the third thing your body's going to use um, for energy, in other words, it really doesn't want to use it, but proteins can be used for energy if there are not enough or if there are insufficient amounts of carbs and lipids or if um, certain conditions um, warrant it. Okay, remember too that anytime you eat more nutrients than what you need, all those nutrients are going to be stored as fat. So I don't have it there, but proteins, excess energy um, that is going to be from proteins in your diet are stored as fat. So just eating more protein in your diet does not increase your muscle mass. You have to actually work your muscles out to increase your muscle mass. But you also need to eat proteins to build that muscle. Um, lipids, whenever you eat too many lipids, then um, the excess lipids would also be stored as fat.